alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome to the second update and this one's title is wives beating in al-islam and this one was a trigger or a question from whatsapp i received the question and it says could you please give your translation of the ayah of 34 from surah an-nisa that is the surah number four and the ayah 34 where it says righteous women are devoutly obedient and then say and if they turn to disobedience and then beat them up and things like that and she goes what is the meaning of this because even without using the hadith the quran actually is calling men to beat up on their wives and uh, and anywhere you go in the tafsirs in translations and everything wife beating is legalized it's legitimate it's in the quran and uh, i will tell you that allah never ever instructed men to beat up on women when women don't do what men want or obey them or serve them or whatever it is that is not what Al-Quran, what is Al-Islam is all about. When you look at the ayah, literally it means darb, every Arab would understand that the darb means beating up, beat up, beat up, beat up, beat up. However, when Allah uses this term in Al-Quran, He uses it in a manner that is different than what the Arabs understood. Of course, to a man, 1400 years ago would be Turk this thing oh god i can beat up on my wife yeah guess what do what i i i actually literally will make my this woman my wife do anything i want everything i want and if she says no then you know i'm gonna give her some good punching why because that's what in the quran the men of religion today have a problem with this because now that the world has opened up women are demanding rights to be respected and things like that and the sheikh suddenly found themselves oh my god in the quran it says that we can beat up on women but how are people going to enter al-islam especially women when they know they can be beaten up at any one time the worst thing that a human can come up against is when women will defend being beaten up and make it a sign of obedience to Allah. I.e., they legalize their abuse with their own tongues, and this is absolutely wrong. When you read the ayah, Allah starts the ayah, The beginning of the ayah, of course this is an update, I'm not explaining, but I'm just giving you the update about the talk. The beginning of the ayah, it speaks about two different genders, the male and the female. The ayah didn't speak about husbands and wives. You go anywhere in the translations, and I've got here 10 in front of me, out of 14. If you go to Quran.com, you'll find these things. They all start men, men, and they end it with women. Not husbands, not wives. And when Allah, but anyhow, I'm going to just go quickly with the translations in English so that you understand the big problems that we have. And I wish Ahmed Didad didn't do the, the circus that he did when he takes the Bible and he tells him, in this Bible it says this, and in this Bible it says that. Which one is the word of God? Now that the Muslims who speak only English have no other recourse except to go to the Quran's meanings in English, every ayah they stuck with 10 different meanings. At one point in the future, some Ahmed did that from Christianity will turn and we say, hey guys, of you in the Muslim world, which version of the Quran would you want? Version 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's go now to the translations. The number one, it says, men are the caretakers of women. The second one says, men should be constant caretakers of women. Number three, men are in charge of women. Four, men are responsible for women. And then he adds his own, protecting and taking care of them. Five, men stand caretakers of women. Six, men are the 
ever upright, i.e. managers of the affairs of women. Seven, husbands. This one has dropped man completely and he went straight away to the jugular vein. Husbands. Husbands should take good care of their wives and the ayah doesn't say this at all. Anyhow, carry on. Men are the protectors and maintainers of women. Men are in charge of women and 11, it says men are the ones who should support women. So this is the first translation i.e. men are the responsibles, the managers, the CEOs, the directors, they are, and women are the ones that are ruled and everything. And then in the same ayah, we're going to go now to the part where it ends with the word bidding up. Allah says, I'll go with the translation. It says, and so this is how they translated the ayah. And if you sense ill conduct from your women, even though the Quran doesn't say that, but they said it. First, advise them. Second, if they persist, do not share their beds. Don't sleep with them. But if they still persist, then discipline them gently. And they put gently between brackets. Ad-darb in the Quran doesn't mean gently. By any hand. Number two, but those women from whom you feel disloyalty, admonish them, admonish them, then and abandon them in beds and strike them. Okay, instead of the beating up, it's striking. Three, but those wives from whom you fear arrogance, first advise them. Then if they persist, forsake them in beds. And finally, in between brackets, strike them. And he puts in between brackets a shy lightly. Number four, the women who you fear would not show devotion to their husbands in what they say or do. I.e., what the husband says or does, and the woman doesn't show devotion, devotions. First thing, remind them of how they should act according to the sacred laws of Allah. And this is a lie. There is no such thing as sacred law except the Quran. And the Quran in so many things is not 100% on the issue. And Allah always gives a leeway to any error. And that's why there is repentance. But, and then he carries on. If they do not change their ways, then leave them alone in bed. And then he puts, turning your back to them and not having sexual relations. And if they still do not change their ways, then strike them without any ferocity. This is wrong. How can you abandon a woman in the bed, not talk to her, and as they say, not having sexual relationship with her, i.e. abandon her physically, emotionally, i.e. you are using sex to curve and bend that woman. And then he says, when you strike her, do it nicely, not ferociously, but do it nicely. It's strange, it really is strange. The other one, he says, as for women whose disobedience you fear, convince them and leave them apart in beds and beat them. Number six, and for women of whom you fear rebellion, convince them and leave them apart in beds and beat them. Number seven, and the ones, i.e. the women, the wives, whom you fear their non-compliance, then admonish them and forsake them in their beds and strike them, i.e. hit them lightly. What is the purpose of hitting? If you're going to do it lightly, don't do it. But anyhow, if you, and someone else said, said if you fear high-handedness, from your wives, i.e. they take the upper part, they become the domineering. He says, remind them of the teaching of God, then ignore them when you go to bed, then hit them. And number nine, as for women of whom you feel rebellion, admonish them and remain apart from them in the bed and beat them. Anyhow, all of them is beat, beat, strike, beat, strike, beat, beat. beat. But the question is, when the wives of the messenger rebelled against him, and it is mentioned in the Quran, 
Why didn't he do what the Quran say? Why didn't he uh, abandon them in bed? And why didn't he beat them up? Or is the messenger has high self-esteem and doesn't go to what Allah says? Why did he quit his house? Why did he go and live outside in an independent room in above his masjid or by, uh, beside the masjid? And he didn't talk to them until Allah revealed the Quran where he gave choices to the wives of the messenger. Either you stop what you are doing or he's going to divorce you and then Allah will replace them. Why? And also there is the story of Zayd in Surah number 33, Al-Ahzab in the Ayah 37. When the wife of Zayd, who later on became the wife of uh, the Muhammad, the messenger, her name is Zainab, when she actually applies this ayah to a T, she felt arrogant, she put herself high above him, she was of the nobles of Quraysh, and he was a black slave, and she was, a, of course, the Arabs are dark skinned, but she was of the nobles. And then she actually mistreated him. And then he went to the messenger of Allah asking for advice. What did the messenger tell him? He used to say, be patient, keep her with her, don't worry about it. Why didn't he say apply ayah 34? Knowing that Al-Ahzab was revealed after number 4 of the number of Nisa. So my dear sisters and my brothers, the idea that Allah would reveal a Quran giving the upper hand to a man over a woman so that he can boss her as he likes. And when she says, no, I don't want to do that or I've had enough, it is within his right to actually go out there and beat her up. They put gently, no gently. It's irrelevant when someone gets angry. I don't think he's going to say, oh my God, I'm going to break her nose. Oh, I've got to do it gently. It doesn't happen like that when you get angry. This is so damaging and so mind, it's numbing really, it's absolutely head breaking. And you will find some educated Muslims, or at least of the old school of thoughts, some old Muslims. For example, this Qatari, the man from Qatar, and he's a sociologist, i.e. a guy who also a PhD in sociology, in understanding how the society works. His name is Abdul Aziz Al Khazraj Al Ansari. He uploaded a video on YouTube, on a, especially on an Arab uh, Al Mujtama, which is the society, and he then uploaded it to YouTube. Do you know how he titled his YouTube thingy? It's simple. He says, "Guide on how Muslim men should beat wives." It's on YouTube. Go to the search. Guide on how Muslim men should beat wives. And in this video, he gives demonstration and explanation about how to go about beating up your wife in an Islamic, permissible, permissible fashion. Of course, he's not going to use a woman because these people don't show the women. So he uses a kid. And you got to go on YouTube and see this calamity. The West now is rolling on the floor laughing everybody. <laughs> so Muslims actually beat their wives and they got to do it nicely, politely and kindly and lightly and discipline. Who's giving the authority to a grown up human being, man, to discipline his wife, a grown-up woman. You see, your child, when they reach an age of, the age of puberty, when they are young men, you feel ashamed of yourself disciplining them. You actually feel small when you put your hand on a grown-up kid. Not to mention when he is 30, you don't even think about it. So why should you think about beating up a wife? All sheikhs are wife beaters, either they have done it themselves or that's their belief. The talk uh, that I'm preparing now deals with this calamity. And I will explain exactly the term of this beating up and why it has absolutely nothing to do with physicality and why the ayah has been so much distorted that even when people read it in the Arabic, they don't understand what it means. Why? 
because of all the dumpings, all the rubbish, all the, the, the human rubbish that the humans have injected in Allah's religion. If women on Judgment Day or if people don't want to accept Islam, on Judgment Day, when they go for accountability, if Allah asks them, why didn't you accept an Islam or the people of Mecca for that matter? or the, and, Well, they say, Allah, in, the, in your Quran, you instructed women to beat up on uh, men, to beat up on their wives. Why should I go to a violent religion that encourages home violence? Well, Allah is going to say, oh, you know what? I didn't mean beating up. I actually meant uh, kindly, gently, uh, uh, gently, nicely, beautifully. I didn't mean to. But God, you did say that first they should give us a moral lesson. They should talk to us. And then if we don't listen, they will abandon us in the bed. Don't you think if a husband is loving, seduces his wife? Yes, I have had an argument, and this happens between couples. The man goes out of his way, prepares a surprise for his woman. They uh, put flower, put I don't know what to make it romantic, and then gives a nice massage to the wife. And then they go to the bedroom and enjoy some nice sex, that connection that we have. And then the problem is gone. No! We admonish you, we give you moral lessons, do this, why don't you fear Allah must obey me? Fear Allah, you must do as I say. And then if she says, no, I'm not listening to you, then comes the second part of the punishment. I don't go to bed with you, I don't sleep with you, I don't, do, I don't even touch you. <laughs> this part always makes me laugh. Because Muslim men assume that they are stallion in the sack. They are actually, when they are in the bedroom with the wives, they are so sexually charged up. They are so sexually attractive so that when they don't go to bed to, with the wife to have sex, she actually is going to cry her life out. Oh my God, the husband that I saw, I can't. Oh my God, I've got desires. Only him can stop it. No one else is like him. I think in... <laughs> 90% of women would say, good riddance, God, what a stupid man. He doesn't, he doesn't even know the ABCs of sex. He doesn't know seduction. He doesn't know nice talks. He doesn't know touches. He doesn't know massages. He doesn't know beautiful, gentle kissings. He, doesn't, he, do, he has no clue on how to awaken the sensual sides of women. He comes like a donkey, just jumps, does the job and goes. Good riddance with that stupid sex. And she'd be happy. And when she's happy, the man will think, oh my God, okay, now that sex has not worked, let me go to the Muhammad Ali ring, boxing things. Is this what Islam is all about? A woman must listen to you, must do... A, why don't you get a servant? Why don't you buy a slave? Why don't you get a robot, for that matter, who will do as you please? Why do we resort to kicking and beating women when they don't listen to us? On my YouTube channel, there is a talk about uh, where is my position as a Muslim woman, what is my position today in Islam, not 1,400 years ago. And I encourage you to listen to that. I've got a series on my YouTube that speaks about the underlying reasons why women are the way they are treated today. In this talk, I will bring every single hadith under the sun which belittle women. And I will show you in this talk why the sheikh, the Salafi sheikh, this cult, this dangerous, poisonous, cancerous uh, cult that has killed the Muslim ummah for centuries, why these people believe the way they believe and behave the way they behave. From a woman is ridden, i.e. the shaitan writes her as, uh, the shaitan writes a woman. So when she comes out, uh, the moment the woman comes from her home, from her home, the shaitan jumps on her shoulder and is riding her. And that's why she should always stay to how women must not walk in the middle of the street. And back then they didn't have street and pavement. They just had one place everybody walks in. But today we have the streets for cars and everything, and we have the pavement. And pavement 
When women in the Islamic way, they should walk to the wall and men should use the rest of the street. So I, if I have to divide the street, the pavement into 100%, women get the last 5% to the wall and men get 95%. If we were in an Islamic state, Women cannot cry over the dead people. Women cannot go and see the, I have lost a son and I go visit him from time to time because he is my kid. But Islam, the, the pious Islam, when a woman loses her kid whom she gave birth, and I didn't give birth to my son, but he's my son. She, you can't go to the graveyard and if you go to the graveyard, you can't cry. If you have lost your father, you cannot cry, God damn you! You must not cry, you're not entitled to these tears. This is the Islam they represent. And then they tell you the deceased gets punished because of when you cry over him. Stop women. When they said to women, don't cry, and women didn't listen, they, start, they shifted the blame to the deceased now. I will show you everything that you need to know that the sheikhs use as a tool and is the motivation of the sheikh. You see, our behaviors, how we speak, always depends on how, what we believe in. What we believe in is the result of ideas that we have had from the past. You eat a nice food because you've experienced it in the past. And you experienced it in the past, it's either by accident or someone suggested it to you, things like that. So when a sheikh looks at a woman as a source of evil, when a Muslim sheikh, even though the Quran says it is Adam who disobeyed Allah in Jannah, but when the Salafi cult sheikhs, this, 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 this disturbed, this, this deranged people, they have authentic hadiths which put the blame on the Adam's wife, not Adam, even though the Quran says it's Adam. That's why we have the problem. This talk will open your eyes to eternity and you will never ever have a man domineering over you or dominating you or make you feel that your duty is to do as he sees. Otherwise, he will remind you of his authority over you. And then if you don't listen, he will punish you in the bed, ignore you, gives you the cold shoulders, the silent treatment. If that doesn't work, then comes the gloves, the boxing gloves. This talk, in my opinion, among, with grave, I, I believe all my talks should be listened to. But for women and for your future, this is the talk that not only you need to listen to once, but listen to it a gazillion times. Because the brainwashing of those perverted men of religion, which have plagued our Islam, have lasted for centuries, so much so that a woman today believes that she is such a shameful act that when she goes out, she covers herself from head to toe. After all, if you see one human being, you've seen them all. If you ever looked at yourself in the mirror, you've seen all humanity. We all have two eyes. We all have a nose, lips, we all have a butt, we all have a front, we all have legs. I don't know what it is when you see in a woman that makes the man ejaculate. I don't know that women must cover and they are source of evil, seduction, perversion, and everything. I don't know. Allah didn't mean it like that. It is as I, it's a new term that I thought of the other day and I love this term. You see, there is an Islam made in heaven, and there is an Islam made on earth. 99.9% .9 of Muslims today follow the Islam made on earth, not the Islam made in heaven. This talk will link you to the Islam in heaven, not the Islam on earth. So until uh, right now, I am working on this talk here, and then once I finish this talk, I'll go back to the punishment in the grave, which is another lie, another headache. I stop here to keep this uh, update slow, uh, small, and condensed and everything, but I just wanted to let you know what I am up to. Uh, the talk has been, uh, until now, I'm, being, uh, I'm working on those stupid, invented, man-made hadith narratives which put women as low, lower 
than, uh, than the sewer in the street, lower than, lower than, uh, lower, right? And uh, once I finish, inshallah, probably a couple more weeks, and then I will uh, record this talk, and after that I go back to the punishment of the grave, and once I finish that, I will uh, upload it, and then I go back to the human history from Adam all the way to entrance to Jannah Paradise and what we expect in Jannah and Paradise. And I will speak and answer one of the thousands of questions uh, are really in Jannah women for men only. And what about women? Don't they get these women too? And if that is, <laughs> and if that is the case, if women are going to sleep sexually with women in Paradise, why is it not permitted today? It's, since you're going to do it later. Oh, headache. This is, uh, my head is starting to hurt. But anyhow, I hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, until I finish this talk, inshallah, stay in the mercy of Allah. And uh, assalamu alaikum. And as you know, the usual drill, please share these talks if you can. Go to YouTube, like the talk so that the logarithm, algorithm of YouTube brings it up. And um, until then, yeah. All right, my dear sisters and brothers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum.